Hello to all my fellow Glorious Gaians. Thank you for joining me, Amber, on my channel, Guidance Through Gaia, where I do tarot pick a card readings. Today we're going to be doing something simple. Uh, it's just a question of how can we balance our light and shadow aspects? Because we all got them. That's why we've got the temperance cards out here today. Uh, and of course, you know, we're never going to be completely balanced. Perfection is impossible. But that doesn't mean that we can't try to improve, you know? So we have group number one with this beautiful swan as the temperance card. Group number two with this character and the stacked stones behind her for temperance. And group number three for Temperance, which is, I believe, reminiscent of Shiva. Um, beautiful artwork. So go ahead, pick your pile or piles, and I'll see you there. Bye. Hey, group number one, you chose the card of the swan for your pile. So let's get into your reading about how can you balance your dark and light aspects. This is a really beautiful card. Um, just the design of it, the, the, I guess, dark palette with the white swan. Um, you know, this seems kind of ominous right here. And then we've got the thrashing water and the swan protecting the cups. But I would say swans are very big symbols of hope as well so you might be going through a journey that is particularly difficult at this point in your life where you may be experiencing some rough emotions what i want to do is i want to get one card to represent the like shadow aspect that we're going to address and then one card to represent the light aspect that we are going to address and then just kind of get a few cards to understand where we can improve in those areas and then get like a manifestation card. All right. Okay. Group number one's shadow aspect that needs Oh, okay. Interesting. The Five of Cups in reverse. And then their light aspect. Mm. What? Okay. Justice. This is very interesting. So... Let's address the shadow aspect first. We've got the Five of Cups in reverse, which typically we would regard as a very positive card. Uh, in this instance, however, it seems that a shadow quality of yours that may need addressing is the ability to just kind of dismiss things really easily. So when we have the Five of Cups upright, it talks about mourning over a loss and focusing on a negative situation while neglecting what still benefits us, what still uh, provides for us. And so in reverse, that can be a healing, you know, typically. Like we're overcoming that sorrow, we're overcoming that pain, and we're moving on. I don't think you give yourself room to grieve when there's a situation, whether it's like the loss of a job or the loss of a friendship, or maybe somebody said something catty to you, um, the loss of a relationship. The Five of Cups in reverse as a shadow aspect tells me that you just have a very strong mentality of, bygones be bygones, let it go, move on to the next. And while that can be a very positive per, uh, trait to have, uh, when we do that in excess, what we're doing is we're not allowing ourselves to heal or process. And so we kind of maintain this 
this superficial level, whether that's like a super, if we're looking at relationships, you know, a superficial connection where maybe we don't value authentic intimacy as much or um, getting close to someone. If it involves a job, for instance, we may not be putting as much effort um, into our work as we could be, or we may not be really um, collaborating with our coworkers because at the end of the day, it's just kind of like this mentality of things could disappear at any moment, you know? And so there's, there's no, I think, appreciation for them. Um, it's kind of like keeping yourself at a distance as well. So let's see, how can you balance this, the shadow aspect of yours? Okay. The eight of wands with the moon. Wow. So the moon definitely does deal with emotions, it deals with intuition and mystery. And the eight of wands, it's very funny because like this is, this is almost a sun, you know? So we've got the contrast of the sun and the moon. And I never noticed this, but look, look at all these tiny little worker bees, you know? They're just going around pollinating stuff. They are very hard at work. Eight of Wands is a movement card. The wands are all about action and creation and passion and movement. The Eight of Wands talks about taking direct movement. So this is telling me that you need to take a very serious and direct um, action towards really exploring your emotions. You know, exploring why do you keep your distance from people or situations? Why, why is it easy for you to just kind of detach emotionally? Uh, you may find, for instance, that in your past, maybe somebody very important to you let you down. Or maybe, you know, for instance, for me, I moved a lot. And so... I didn't have a lot of stability growing up. Mm -hmm. And overall, this is just talking about like, don't dance around the issue. Don't kind of address this. Um, nonchalantly. This is the time to really delve into your deeper emotions and kind of aggressively and very seriously, you know, because there's going to be some resistance and you're really going to have to push through that resistance group number one. So the justice card for um, for your light attribute, I think it's really interesting, you know, justice is all about fair, what's right and what's wrong. It's order. And the fact that like, I think it's very interesting that you have the five of cups in reverse, which means like you let things go so easily, but then there's this really strong sense of justice, you know? So when I envision this card as uh, like a, the epitome of this card to me is people get what's coming to them. You know, the people, you sow what you reap. You No, excuse me, you reap what you sow. And so if you are spreading positivity in the world, if you're, people, if you're treating people kindly, then you're receiving that back. But if you're treating people like shiz, then that's what you're going to get, you know? And maybe that's why partially we have this five of cups in reverse here. Maybe you kind of just believe the universe is going to, do its thing and take care of it, take the trash out for you. Um, but that's not also really addressing how it makes you feel. But this, I think, sometimes in life we need to offer a little grace, you know, give people the benefit of the doubt. Justice is black and white, typically, in this sense. But the reality is much of the world operates on a, on a level of gray. Um, for instance... 
stealing. Okay, stealing is wrong, right? So let's say the CEO of a company is embezzling. Maybe they've spent beyond their means. They bought a lot of yachts, they have paid for a lot of vacations, um, they've gone out gambling and they've run into debt. And so they're stealing to compensate for that. That is, that's wrong. Like they've had more than enough money to sustain themselves. They need to learn how to curb their habits. But then people stealing food from the grocery store because they got hungry mouths to feed, you know, including their own. Is that necessarily wrong? I mean, some people would say, oh, well, you know, they just need to get a job. Who says they don't have a job? Um, or who says they haven't been trying to get a job? You know, we don't... Sometimes we can be as responsible as we know how to be and it's still not meeting our needs. I mean, we live in a very, we live in a capitalist society. Everything is about the rotation of money. And unfortunately, a lot of things get more expensive, but we don't usually make more. Like our wages don't increase. So let's see how you can balance your sense of justice. The Four of Wands. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, I love that. See, the Justice card, it kind of gives this very cold, precise, definitive energy. But then you've got the Four of Wands, and that's so welcoming and so warming and loving. Look at the bigger picture. You know, the Four of Wands can represent family and unity. And I so I think it's important for you to look at things from a more unified perspective instead of looking at things um, from a singular point of view. You know, so we can, for instance, take the theft issue. If you see someone stealing a whole bunch of groceries from the grocery store, if you're looking at it from a purely mental perspective, then yes, you'll look at it and be like, man, what she's doing is wrong. Like she needs to do something else and be more of an honest citizen. But you can look at it from the perspective of, oh crap, like maybe she has kids at home to feed. And I mean, Regardless of what you might think of the woman, you certainly don't want those children to go hungry. I think this also represents like putting yourself in the position of other people as well. This card, when I'm looking at it, really gives me like connecting with people. Instead of standing there alone and judging, you know, really try to engage with people get to know them or put put yourself in their perspective put yourself in their shoes it's about including yourself instead of like being on the outside looking in you know so i oh i think that's really beautiful group number one we're gonna get a manifestation card Okay, so universe, give us a card for group number one. Okay, we're gonna get a bunch of these. My brain is an engine of evolution. Your brain is fluid and flexible, able to create new connections through very old age. Exactly. So, I mean, sometimes we might think like, this is how I've always been or this is the only way that I know how to be, it's important to remember that you are capable of change. Everybody is capable of change. You know, the older we get, it might not be as easy, but as long as we're willing and persistent, then we can. Let's see. I do not measure myself by any external standard. The flow of life's abundance brings me everything. 
Turn the path of desire, which for most people is focused on worldly things, and redirect it to a higher plane. And that might be partially what's influenced your shadow side and your, your light side. This being able to just kind of let things go while also holding this really firm sense of responsibility and right and wrong might be because of... Um, the lot you've kind of been handed in life, you know, whether it's through connections or whether it's through monetary gain and possessions, um, where it's just kind of like the sense of like, if you've lost things, you haven't cried over spilt milk, um, but you have this like really so strong sense of like what you do have demonstrates your worth and the reality is is like the worth is within you it's not anything external i am flexible in my body and mind i embody healthy positive energy the highest correlation for reaching 90 or 100 years of age in good shape is emotional resilience the ability to bounce back from life's setbacks so absolutely you know when we're talking about balance and we're looking at something like the five of cups and a shadow aspect that's not saying like, oh, you know, you should never get over things. You can't be flexible. This this can be a very positive quality. It's just you don't want to overextend it. You know, balance is difficult. <laughs> I, I struggle with it. Um, but... The, the, the objective with balance is to learn when is it appropriate to have these mindsets in, in, this, in, in this context, you know, being really firm about a boundary of right and wrong and being able to let something go and not like mourn the loss of it. And when do we just kind of, when do we need to take a different approach? So... It's these qualities are useful to you and you shouldn't get rid of them. They just need a little bit of tweaking. So group number one, I hope that this reading was useful to you. If you resonate with it, please let me know how in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed but would like to, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Sorry for my dogs. And the notification bell and you'll be alerted to whenever I upload a new video. And if you're interested in a personal reading with yours truly, I do offer them. My contact information is down in the description box down below. Bye. Hello, group number two. You chose the version of Temperance where it is a solo, oops, <laughs> solo figure meditating on what appears to be a body of water with some rocks stacked behind her. So... I think this is really beautiful, the fact that this figure is nude and, uh, you know, sitting in a traditional yoga pose, um, although with the stacking of the stones, please don't do that when you're hiking, please. It disrupts the natural ecosystem, but, you know, for the purpose of it, it's, it's just a very serene imagery. She's vulnerable, she's exposed, she's in tune with her body and mind and the elements. Definitely the kind of freedom that I, I think I would like to have. What we're going to do right now is we're going to look at one card that represents your shadow aspect that's out of balance, the other your light aspect that's out of balance. And then we're going to see how we can balance those out and then get um, a manifestation card. All right. So, you know, like I said in the intro, we're never going to be completely in balance. There's no such thing as perfection. But being aware of our imbalances and actively pursuing the um, the eat like you know, the balance, the stability of them is is something that we definitely can benefit from. Hmm. 
So we have the Nine of Swords in reverse for your shadow aspect, which is very interesting. That is, you know, group one got a similar card that typically we would look at as kind of um, usually in a positive light in its reversed state, but we'll get into that in just a moment. Okay, the Page of Cups in reverse. Very interesting, very interesting. So, we'll start with this Nine of Swords. The Nine of Swords represents anxiety. It represents being entirely consumed by the what ifs, I should haves, um, the worst case scenarios. And when it's in reverse, it talks about letting those go. It talks about choosing to trust in the universe, trust in ourselves, um, understanding that we don't have any, sometimes we don't have the control that we would like in situations. And it talks about like bravery you know, in uncertain times, being able to put your foot forward and move ahead in spite of a lack of clarity. In the reverse, in, in, as a shadow aspect, how I would describe the Nine of Swords in reverse is like a wall. <laughs> A mental wall um, where consequences are not considered. Action is not evaluated beforehand. Um, there's like a lack of self-awareness. Uh, potentially even emotional intelligence, you know, like how our actions affect others. This is the mentality of somebody who sometimes behaves without thinking and really isn't concerned about how others feel about them, which is a positive thing sometimes. You know, there we definitely don't want to allow the potential opinions of others to completely dictate our lives. And we don't want to be consumed by worry to the point of, of being paralyzed. But this is a situation where it's in excess. And so we're going to look at how can you... How can you balance this shadow aspect? You know, shadow aspects are very useful. Um, they're, they're protective. They provide strength for us. Mm, the three of swords. Upright. So it's very likely that group number two, this mentality here is as, is a result of pain. Um, the three of swords talks about heartbreak and typically backstabbing. You know, it's it's usually when we've trusted somebody and they have blindsided us. Although this doesn't always have to be the case. This could be um, maybe there was a friend you lost, whether because they moved, you had a disagreement. Maybe I hope this isn't the situation, but maybe a death. This could be um, losing a job, you know, ending up in a situation where maybe you did have a lot of anxiety for a while. And so you might have just gotten to a point where you kind of went numb. You know, you turned those feelings off. You turned your brain off. You're on autopilot. And that understandably can be utilized as kind of a, um, what we call it? Um, like a survival tactic, you know, a preservation technique because anxiety, pain, that can be extremely exhausting 
not only on our mind, but on our physical self as well. But it is important for you to address that pain and to allow yourself to feel it. I think this is, you know, not just necessarily about reflecting on past pains, although I do think this is a very important aspect of it. This is also indicative of allowing yourself to feel the pain that's available, like that could be presented to you in the present um, and especially the future because pain is a natural part of life. Um, I'm reminded of, what is it, Lock and Key, where in the first season, the sister goes into her dreams and she takes the personification of fear out of her and destroys it, buries it in the real world in the yard, only to develop into someone who's like just really reckless and thoughtless and puts herself at danger and puts others at danger. You know, so things like fear and pain, they serve a purpose. Now the page of cups in reverse, we might look at this in the in a typical reading as like a negative aspect, but I, I think this is actually a very positive one. Uh, I think that you are a person who is selective about who and what you invest in emotionally. Myself, I have a tendency of giving my heart away too easily. <laughs> you know, and, and while it is good to be open to relationships and open to um, vulnerabilities in other ways, to do so without forethought and without care, it can really be damaging to us, to ourselves. So in this respect, the Page of Cups, who normally is somebody who pursues their dreams relentlessly, who willingly gives their heart over to another, this, this Page of Cups is someone who's more careful about it. Which is very funny because like we talk here about how you might not be thinking, you know, you might just kind of shut your brain off when you, when you act. Um, but I think that would be just kind of in your everyday life. I think when it comes to emotions, emotional attachment, uh, to titles, to people, to hopes and dreams, I definitely think you are less likely to um, be involved in those. So let's see, how can you even out this aspect of yourself? Because while you do want to hold reservations, this could also be seen as um, holding back so much that you're missing out on opportunities. You know, I'm the kind of person, for example, who doesn't like to do anything unless I feel assured that there's going to be success. And so I, I'm certain that I have missed out on a lot of wonderful opportunities where maybe I wouldn't have been, you know, quote unquote, successful, but I would have learned something. I would have met some great people. I would have had great times all because, you know, I was too afraid to, to be vulnerable in those situations. So how can group two balance this light attribute? Oh, Hmm, we have the High Priestess in reverse with the Five of Wands. Very interesting. So normally the High Priestess is somebody who's like mysterious, ooh, and you know, she has kind of the inner knowledge, um, the truths to the world that are unseen. In this instance, the High Priestess is somebody who could be kind of, um, be more, how do I want to put it? I guess less focused on the 
the mental realm or the spiritual realm, you know, having the answers, being in touch with your intuition, and more about being in the present, being someone who is experiencing life as it's happening to them, somebody who isn't necessarily looking for the deeper meaning in things all the time. And then I think with the Five of Wands here, the Five of Wands is all about combat. It's about battle. You know, you've had the Four of Wands, which signifies stability, a home life, creation. And then the Five of Wands is something's happening and disrupting that serene atmosphere, disrupting that um, unity or that accomplishment. And so I think what this indicates is that maybe even with the five of wands, that might not represent your interactions with other people. I think what this represents is allowing yourself to experience the messiness of life. Allow yourself to go into situations that you're not certain about. Allow yourself to be at conflict sometimes and to not know where you're supposed to go or what you're supposed to do or if someone you know it, like romantically if they're the one or not you know just just experience life as it is so now group number two what we're going to do is we are going to get a manifestation card for you you know a sentiment that you may be able to kind of focus on and meditate on that will help you reach these goals and you know I didn't do it for the last group um, they got three cards that just popped out but this group I'm gonna specifically pull a card from, for this side and pull a card for this side I just feel called to do that so a mantra for group two's shadow aspect I am open, I am in flow, I am light. When you are in the flow, there are certain feelings associated with it, being light, open, and fresh. Being in this feeling gently pushes out negativity and resistance. And so, you know, of course you don't wanna be stuck in a negative mind frame, which is what we would be doing if we had the Nine of Swords upright. But the universe is telling you at this point, like, you don't have to avoid allowing negative thoughts into your mind or acknowledging negative experiences. That's not what the point is. The point is when you do have those to work through them and <clears throat> allow yourself to experience them so that you can process and then let go. You know, it's all a natural process and by engaging in this, um, authentically and organically, you will come around in that full circle to feeling light and open and fresh. <clears throat> okay, so what advice, what mantra do we have for group two's light aspect? Oh, okay. I'm not going to take those ones, but this one's. Aw, I am free from limitations. Like attracts like, love awakens the soul. I think that is beautiful, you know, because it, it can be scary when we are exposing vulnerabilities in the situation where we don't feel certain, you know, what if this isn't the right job? What if this person hurts me? What if I don't do well in this project? But if you're authentic to who you are, like, you will be drawn and you will draw in opportunities and people that will honor your light and your love, okay? So group number two, I hope that this reading was useful for you. If it resonated somehow, please let me know in the comment section down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna join our family but haven't yet, you can hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll find out whenever I upload a new video. Also, if you're interested in a private reading with yours truly, my contact information is in the contact, is in the description box down below. Bye guys. Hello, group number three. You chose this beautiful card as your temperance card. Uh, we have, it looks like Shiva here, who is part of the Hindu religion. Um, you know, I should know more about 
that level area of theology, but uh, I forget. I forget things easily. Um, oh, you know what? I actually have the book right here, and I flipped to Temperance right here. So let's see. Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara, India, Buddhist Bodhisattva. Temperance is about balance and meditation. Um, the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara identities are fluid, but their goodwill remains constant. Okay, so. Oh, excuse me. You may be in a, in a very, like, spiritual point in your life or just, I guess, trying to connect more with yourself or um, the universe or just your life around you. Um, trying to see beyond beyond what's in front of your eyes, you know? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one card to represent your shadow uh, aspect that is imbalanced. Another card to represent your light aspect that's imbalanced. And then get a little information on how we can balance each one of those. And ah, then get a manifestation card. Um, you know, we're never gonna be perfectly in balance. And there are definitely times when we need to take breaks from, you know, trying to work on ourselves. It can be a very exhausting process. Uh, but it's always good to be aware of where we stand on the spectrum. And, you know, I'm just here to provide some ideas on how you can expand yourself. So... I do think, you know, tarot is typically best utilized as a method for self-reflection. Although, I mean, I've, I've had, I've had predictions come true. Anyway, let's get it. Let's get started. Give me one card, please. To represent group three's shadow aspect that is out of alignment. Thank you. Ah, the five of swords. Okay. And let's see, their light aspect that is out of balance. Okay, all right. So we're just gonna take a look at these. We have the Five of Swords here um, and the Four of Coins. Now your shadow aspect Okay, so first of all, this makes me think of the Prince of Egypt when, like, Moses is looking at the history of his family's rule and the hieroglyphics, and then it, like, takes that dreamisk reality where he sees the guards using these bad boys and taking the Hebrew babies and disposing of them. Um, so, and that's, a, you know, that's a really painful thing to experience, to experience a sort of loss and the five of swords typically represents a combat, um, being on the offensive consistently and not necessarily on the defensive and when we think of the five of swords we think of intellect wit communication and so it might be that uh you're focused on like very negative aspects of people or situations around you you might even be, sometimes I think of the Five of Swords as more of like an internal battle, since it does deal with the mind. And you may be heavily focused, you know, on your own flaws. And, um, or you might just be kind of impulsively just, just picking fights with people. And when we're experiencing conflict of any of those natures, I mean, there's a purpose for it. It's not just like, random it's there to let us know that something isn't right you know if we're focusing on our flaws 
that's because we see where we fall short and we want to improve. And that's a very positive thing. However, if we're only focusing on the flaws and we're allowing it to consume us and drag us down, then we're not coming up with any solutions. We're not coming up with um, a plan and, and we aren't acknowledging the part of ourselves that are beneficial, that are helpful, that are positive, that exceed expectations. If we're focusing on the negative aspects of others, we're noticing the things that could be harmful to themselves or harmful to us, and that's important. But it's also important to understand, you know, are those negative aspects kind of disqualifiers for having that person in your in your community? Does that null your relationship with them? And if not, you know, is there is this something that you need to approach them about and, and discuss with them if you feel like they're damaging themselves? or they're damaging others. And, and if this is just about like being combative with everybody, you know, are you, do you really have issues with the people that you're instigating arguments with? Um, or, and if so, you know, how can you correct those? How can you handle those? And if not, is there something else going on? You know, like for instance, if you're overworked and you're not sleeping well, that stress accumulates and you're more likely to be very irritable with other people, you know, and it's not necessarily that they're doing anything wrong. It's just that you have so much on your plate and your ability to regulate your emotions is deteriorated. So let's see how the universe recommends we can balance this trait. How can group three balance their shadow aspect? The eight of cups in reverse. Oh, okay. That's very interesting because the eight of cups in reverse talks about sticking around. It talks about remaining in a situation Okay. Now it it can talk about if you're if you've been in a habit really of like just cutting people out of your life, then it can talk about not jumping the gun on that. Don't be so hasty to remove people. Um, I do want to get further information. It's interesting because I did like a little flip, and if it would have jumped out in the upright position that would have talked about walking away and that would have made a little bit more sense to me in the long run because it, to me that would have indicated like you know let go of the negative thoughts um let go of your judgments maybe disconnect from people okay we got a whole bunch here we got the eight of coins which talks about mastering something um and putting hard work into something and the interesting thing about this eight of coins i i don't typically see this side ugh, this type of depiction where someone feels as if they're being attacked you know or they're going to be robbed of of their hard work uh we have the hanged man and the empress oh okay So when we look at the hanged man and the empress, what we're talking about is looking at from a different perspective. How can we nurture ourselves and how can we nurture others? Um, I feel like especially with this eight of pentacles and, and the eight of pentacles often deals with materialistic items and career uh, and stability. This is an indication, I think, of you may be torn between two situations, and we'll just take the easiest example, you know, work and family. Um, if you're overworking, if you are overloaded with tasks, um, or you're not sleeping well as a result, you know, you could be lashing out at others. And so I feel like you may be Feeling as if you're needing to walk away from something, cut something out of your life. But I feel that the universe is signifying, you know, not necessarily to do that. 
because we have the Eight of Cups in reverse, stay, and then the Eight of Pentacles, which is master, um, master the skill. And the way in which we can combat the extreme imbalance of this Five of Swords is by considering like, how can you nurture yourself? I think that's really what you need to do, group number three. I think you need to focus on how can you ease your exhaustion or your stress? How can you pamper yourself? How can you make you yourself feel better? Because when you feel good, you know, you're less likely to be lashing out at others or to be um, in a negative mind frame. So definitely... This could also, I mean, talk about how can you nurture others, but I do think for the majority of you, this is really talking about taking some time for self-care. And then we have the four of coins, which talks about hoarding your resources. Um, you know, fours are all about stability. And once again, this is a coin issue. We typically are thinking of monetary possessions, income, jobs and careers. I think this, this, to me, this represents the dedication. I feel like for a lot of you, this is really career oriented. This could, this could definitely talk about dedication to frugality. You know, maybe you feel like you just need to kind of save your money um, or maybe you are just really focused on your career right now. And that is, both of those are a good positive thing, you know? You want to have extra money just in case something happens. You know, you can't pay rent for a month for whatever reason. Your car breaks down. Um, prices go up at the grocery store. Maybe you need a babysitter when you didn't expect to. Or, you, you know, whatever. But you also do need to just allow yourself to, excuse me. You know, money, money that sits in the bank, what's it really going to do? You know, you deserve to have a good time, whether that's like maybe you want to go out to eat somewhere or maybe you want to buy that perfume or that cologne that you like so much or maybe you just want a day out at the movies or something, you know, and if this is about work, it's it's great to be passionate and committed to your employment there's so much more to life than work okay and you know i'm thinking of trevor noah's uh most recent netflix special and he was talking about people identifying themselves and how over in like france you know like in america we might say if someone's like, tell me about yourself, you might be like, hey, I'm, my name's Amber, I'm 34, I'm a CNA. And he was saying, like, the French don't do that. They don't, they don't equate their identity with their career. Um, if you're French, let me know if that's true. <laughs> so how can we balance the light aspect, universe? How can we balance the light aspect? Seriously, temperance, <laughs> moderation. Maybe that means taking a few days off of work or saying no to picking up a shift. Maybe that means, hey, creating a balance for yourself for like your spending money, your fun money. The world in reverse. <sighs> With the page of cups and the six of wands. Okay. Okay. So with the world in reverse, I really feel as if that's indicative of reminding yourself, like, don't catastrophize things, you know, or don't try to, um, I don't want to say it, I guess. If this, if this four of pentacles is coming from a perspective of needing to feel safe or needing to feel stable, realize that you 
not having everything planned out and not um like working yourself to the bone or saving every penny or like okay so okay let me try that again so not having everything planned out doesn't mean that it's going to be the end of the world i think you're more prepared than you realize and to the point where maybe you're over extending yourself to me, the world in this sense is a reminder that everything comes and goes and that there will always be more. There will always be more resources. The Page of Cups with the Six of Wands. The Page of Cups is somebody who explores things that they feel attached to, explores their interests, their creativity, what sings to their soul. And the Six of Wands indicates that is what's gonna lead you to victory. Now, victory in this sense might seem different than what you envision as it is now, but if you feel, okay, like if you feel any tension in like your back, your neck, if you're getting headaches or whatever, maybe your jaw, like that's a sign that you're doing too much. You're too stressed, okay? Take some time off, cut back a little bit on the work, or set aside some money for yourself to explore your interests and do the things that you enjoy so we're gonna get a couple of manifestation cards one for each side all right and i get a manifestation side a manifestation card for the shadow aspect okay two of them you are made for a higher purpose. I am here to serve. I am here to inspire. I am here to love. I am here to live my truth. I think that mentality is going to be useful for you in kind of pulling back from that very cutthroat knee jerk behavior or mentality. Um, to serve, I think, is really important, you know, because. To serve others, but also to serve yourself. Um, and you're here to love, inspire, and live your truth. Uh, I am still, I am silent, I am alive and well. Meditation exposes your brain to a less active state. And through repeated exposure, your brain adapts to that stillness and silence. Exactly. You know, you may need to sit down and do some sort of meditation and continuously work on it in order to train your brain to accept the silence. You know, uh, the Five of Swords can really be about a lot of overactive mental energy. And I think it's really important that you take intentional effort to try to calm that. And it's not gonna be successful at first, you know, but don't give up. Okay, how can we, there we go. Your body needs you to master how awareness works. My state of mind sets the physical agenda in trillions of my cells. So if you're sitting here focused on like, I need to have everything perfect. I need every penny accounted for. I need to work, 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 work. That sense of restriction is creating that tension in your body. It is restricting the movement and the comfort in your body. And when you allow yourself to pull back from that need of, of con that need to control and that need to conserve and you're giving your body, you're giving your body more freedom to relax and to experience life in a more healthy, balanced way. And this is, I am here now. The present moment is the only place where renewal is possible. And you know, when we, when we have this four of coins mentality, that's because we are projecting fears onto the future or projecting concerns. And in, you need to let that go, hun. It's very difficult. I struggle with that at times as well, but you may wanna look into methods of remaining present. Um, I've read like journaling can be really helpful. Meditation can be helpful. Um, there are a slew of articles and YouTube videos that really could, um, and podcasts, I'm sure 
I could really help you in that area. So group number three, I hope that you found this useful to you. If it resonated, please let me know how in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't joined our family but would like to, you can hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell so you'll know whenever I upload a new video. If you're interested in a personal reading, I do offer those and my contact information is in the description box down below. Bye.